Thank you so much. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. I can't tell you how glad I am to have been invited to participate in this. Georgia means very much to me. This whole group of wonderful ecologists that have been here for so long and done such marvelous work are uh, uh, just incredible and something I'm very proud to be associated with. And it's even very much fun to see some of my former professors like uh, Bernie uh, Patton sitting in the audience there. I took his uh, assistant ecology courses, and they were two of the best courses I, I, I ever uh, had. So with that, let me just start uh, giving you a little bit about Otomology 101. These are my bona fides when I was here. Um, and that picture is me, the very month I started as a graduate student. So uh, uh, students, don't let this happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I, I'm no Jim Porter, but I have done some diving as well. Uh, my uh, thesis committee uh, consisted of Bob Johannes, who was a marvelous man. You'll hear a little bit more about him in a minute. Larry Pomeroy was the chair of the reading committee. Uh, Bill Weeby, who's here right now. Uh, Dirk Frankenberg and Grace Thomas, who are no longer with us. Uh, I uh, did my dissertation on phosphorus in corals. And uh, I was very, very lucky to have uh, stumbled on Bob Johannes. I had originally wanted to do work in estuaries, and he said, I don't do that anymore. I work on coral reefs. Do you want to go to Hawaii with me this summer? And like, you know, my mama didn't raise no fool. I said yes, and I'd never even really seen a decent coral reef in my life. So that's how I ended up in this. I was also very fortunate because I ended up as a member of the Symbios team. I was a factotum for him. I was his boy Friday, and as such, I got to go along to this marvelous expedition that I'm going to tell you about. Uh, also here today are two other alumni of that expedition, and that's Judy Meyer and, and Bill Weeby. So, uh, and Georgia played a very significant role in that, and I'm going to talk about that now. And then we go back to the earliest days of Earth Day, the very first Earth Day had a very prominent involvement of graduate students here. My current colleague, uh, uh, Jane Turner, for example, was heavily involved in it. And I remember seeing an Athens Banner Herald art article about our uh, uh, activities when we, we got it going. So it was a wonderful thing. Now, <clears throat> I was very lucky to have gotten to interact quite a bit with Jane Odom. And uh, in this case here, I am with uh, Jane, Martha, and HT, uh, accepting their money to help establish a, a scholarship for the Estrian Research Federation uh, in, in memory of Bill, who was a wonderful guy, Gene's son. And we all know about the Odom's very holistic approach to understanding um, uh, ecology, understanding ecosystems. The whole is more than just the sum of the parts. You hear that, emergent properties, so on and so forth. Those are the hallmarks of the Odom kinds of thinking. At the time I was here, the uh, uh, the big talk of the graduate students was this paper that, that Gene wrote in Science. The, as he used to say, the strategy of ecosystem development. You can never quite get strategy out. And now it, it's, it may be a bit, te a bit teleological in the name, uh, uh, and, but uh, I still can't think of a better, a better title for it. And it's a, it's a truly seminal paper in our field. I, I wonder if all the students here, uh, how many students are, do we have in the audience right now? Could raise your hand, I'd be interested. How many of you have read this paper? Okay, now this is your homework for tonight. <laughs> so please read the paper. Uh, and of course the, the Green Bible, which we all knew about, uh, uh, the, uh, the first ecology text, and, uh, and like Monica, I, uh, I actually taught from the second version, et cetera. So I'm not gonna go into a great deal of time to, uh, going through these. You can read them, uh, but these are the kind of hallmark principles that we, uh, we all lived by when we were, were graduate students. The holism, the idea that there was a biophysical nature to the universe, that we had to have respect for the fundamental laws of nature, they were immutable, and we used new techniques and technologies. We, we tried to be uh, very inventive, I think as I mentioned, Bernie's approach to involving uh, uh, numerical methods for understanding ecosystems was very important. Uh, the ideas about long-term ecosystem research was, were, were, were gelling, the LTER programs, kind of thinking, all that kind of stuff. We had 
fantastic teachers. We had a fantastic group here. That's one of the hallmarks of this amazing outfit for so many years, is the faculty has been just spectacular. And I just listed the ones I could think of. I'm sure I missed a few people. Uh, they did their work all over the world and uh, were involved in many large programs, international biological program, did work in grasslands in the Midwest, they, some of the first modeling of ecosystems, major modeling of ecosystems, uh, the Anahuitak uh, Atoll research that I was involved in, so on and so forth. So we are a very peripatetic group of people. Now, my example of the ecosystem approach being applied to, uh, to a research is this wonderful two-month-long expedition. We had a crew of 23 scientists, and we had the Alpha Helix, uh, a ship uh, that finally ended up being decommissioned from UNOLS, uh, tied up at the dock, being our floating laboratory and logistical uh, supply place. They generated the power that we used both on the ship and the shore. They made fresh water for our, our contingent. And most of the people lived in old barracks that had been, and then we talked for the atomic testing that had gone on. The, uh, the PIs in this were Larry Pomeroy and Bob Johannes. Bob was actually the chief scientist on the mission. And it was an incredibly productive thing. I have done citation analysis on this. And as uh, I, I think it was the provost mentioned this morning, Citations tell a great deal about the character of uh, science and the success of it. And we found that not only were our publications heavily cited, but there is a lot of persistence to the citations. So over and over and over again, you see these things cited because they're so important. I have been doing a history of this expedition for some time now. I think it's very important for scientists to document the scientific history that, that's involved. Uh, you may recognize some familiar faces there. Uh, that's Judy Meyer uh, uh, down in the corner, for example. And uh, an, an unknown, another unknown person with a, his uh, shark spear uh, standing there, uh, again documenting what shouldn't happen to you in your life course. Uh, uh, so anyway, uh, the, the, the quote I have here is because so much of science is building upon the knowledge collected by those who came before us, it's imperative that we do a better job of documenting the history of science. Hence, collecting, organizing, analyzing materials for the historical record is an important part of this project. And that's, uh, that's very much what it's about. Um, and we talk is a fascinating place in history for many reasons. It was the site of a major uh, World War II battle in January of 1944. It was a staging area for the, invas the pro projected invasion of China, of uh, Japan, rather. Uh, and, uh, Many, uh, many ships were there, uh, protected by its, its uh, lagoon uh, in, in 1944. It was chosen, unfortunately, as a site of uh, atomic bomb testing, and uh, the first uh, hydrogen bomb was blown off there, the Mike explosion that I show here. As a result, there's a lot of, uh, uh, there was a lot of, uh, of material left from both the war and the atomic testing that had to be cleaned up, and the Atomic Energy Con uh, Com uh, Commission, later IRDA, and later uh, Department of Energy, uh, were involved in doing that. So that was helpful to us, though, because there were a lot of uh, logistical features that we could use. Now, everybody knows this classic paper. Again, if you haven't been aware of it, at least leaf through it. It's worth knowing. The original HT and EPO article from uh, Ecological Monographs in 1955 they did this, I don't know how they did all this work in six weeks. It, it's just an amazing, amazing feat. Uh, and uh, that's the kind of energy that, that Gene and HT had. Uh, and this was kind of the scientific underpinning for our, our whole show. The, the concept was the concept of flow respirometry, which is basically you, you look at the flow of, uh, of water across the reef driven by the waves that crash on the windward side and you measure upstream and downstream concentrations, you know the volume transport, and you can calculate what the flux of materials was from the, from the benthos. So we did this for a, a good two months. <clears throat> the study sites were uh, uh, at a, uh, an uncontaminated part of the uh, atoll, near where the, the, uh, the uh, landing field was for the uh, uh, planes coming in, that we had good service 
uh, once or twice a week to Hawaii. Uh, so we had a logistical base that was pretty good. And we lived on, on what was called Japtan Island. Now, all of the structures that were there when we were there are gone, and it's basically a, a, a plantation for coconut palms. The science uh, was, was really uh, very much the Odom kind of thinking. How do a coral communities function as a single metabolic unit? I can't go into a lot of detail about the science, but, because I just don't have time, but um, we accomplished a lot of the goals that we had planned to accomplish at the outset, and we missed on others. Uh, we came up with surprising information that we never expected to get. I'll get to that in a second. What were the characteristics of the expedition? Well, first of all, it was team-driven. It was a long deployment. It had terrific leadership. Bob and Larry were absolutely fabulous. Excellent uh, logistics, even though we were way out in Nowheresville. And we had women participating, really <coughs> unusual back in those days. Uh, Judy, uh, who was then a graduate student at the University of Hawaii, working with John Caperon, came along largely as, as a support uh, person. And she was uh, to, uh, to be a roommate with uh, Susie Betzer, who was at the University of Rhode Island. And um, it, was, it was not well received by the uh, male leadership in the AEC, et cetera. And so Larry and Bob had to fight hard to make this happen. But uh, the way this operated is us young folks got a lot of time to do our own research and participate in things. And Judy, I don't know, are you here? There you go. There she is. Uh, Judy, I, I, I talked to her later about what her role was and how this all played out and how, what it was like to be uh, one of two out of 23 when the rest are males. And they're the first women that have been back there since the atomic bomb testing moved all the women away. It was an amazing, uh, amazingly uh, breakthrough thing. And we also had very good support of graduate students and postdocs and very diversified and excellent funding source. Now, when I say this is a very UGA-oriented thing, in red are all the people that had UGA ties back then or uh, subsequently had UGA ties. So nine out of the 23 had some sort of a tie to UGA. So we're very, very proud of that. Uh, but we had many other institutions represented, uh, URI, VIMS, uh, etc. Now, Bob Johannes, uh, who's no longer with us, and Larry Pomeroy, as I said, provided incredible leadership. Well, was Gene Odom involved in your, I mean, was, was he involved in the planning of Anamita? No. Where is he at this time? Playing a passive role? In the, is, is he older than, what's... Oh, he's, uh, he's still very active as a researcher, full of ideas, amazing fellow. Uh, like most geniuses, 90% of the ideas weren't very good, but uh, there were 10% that were just... This is like marvelous. And he had a lot of and he had loads of them. He just spewed them out like a green bird. Or he was he was and he was a very nice man too. Yeah. Um, but he was on to other things. He was very supportive of the idea that some of his people should be off following up on in the footsteps of, of him and his brother and we talk. He thought that was great, but he he played no active role or hardly even a passive role. Just 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 approval because he was interested in mm. fields and. and, and Swamps okay, there's it. Okay, and salt marshes in those days. Anyway, I don't have time to go the whole clip, but um, uh, that was uh, Jan Sapp who was doing the interview. Um, Johannes was highly regarded by the participants. Here are a bunch of, of wonderful quotes that that uh, show how uh, how significant a leader Bob was. He was flexible, thoughtful, intelligent, uh, and and just a, a, a wonderful guy to work with. And it's sad to, that we lost him. Uh, uh, under unfortunate circumstances. As I said, we had a number of young scientists there. I, I love that picture of Bob Kinsey, a former member of the Jefferson Airplane Band. Uh, uh, Jim Maragos, uh, 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 Greg Talek is no longer with us. There's another picture of Judy. Uh, and in the uh, upper panel over here, you can see uh, Judy and uh, others standing in front of an A-bomb crater at Enoe Talk. Uh, we were told that it was all clean when we went there, and then later they said, oh, by the way, we were wrong. You should never have been there. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> we're still here, Judy. <laughs> uh, here's a picture of the senior scientists doing their thing, and it gives you an idea what the facilities are like at Mid-Pacific Marine Laboratory. And there's, of course, Larry. 
So uh, let me just, here's a little bit of a clip from what Larry had to say. Well, I don't want to, to, to take too much of your time with an interview, <laughs> but is there anything you wanted to, to, to say that, that should be covered that I might not have covered in, in terms particularly of symbiosis or, or marine science? Well, obviously that was, it, it was a landmark in my life. Uh, the bad expedition was, was uh, uh, not only a lot of fun, but it was really a landmark in science that I enjoyed being part of. As we all did, that for sure. So what were the key findings? A number of incredible uh, findings. Probably the most significant of all was that uh, the uh, reef fixed nitrogen at the level of an alfalfa field. And uh, Bill Wiebe was uh, critically important in making that determination. It was a completely uh, unexpected result. We had to change uh, our strategy. They had to bring in all kinds of, uh, of, of, of incubation vessels to do uh, incubations for acetylene reduction, et cetera. Uh, we demonstrated there was substantial net, net export of uh, nitrogen from the reef. We had good calcium carbonate budgets. We got an idea into the nitrogen cascade that occurs on a coral reef. And an unexpected result, and probably the most cited paper, is one that um, Buttermeyer, Mergos, and Knudsen, Knudsen uh, produced to show that coral growth bands were facial chronometers. And it's been extremely important in, in helping to deal with the global climate uh, understanding that we've had. So, uh, it just shows that there can be serendipity that occurs in these things as well. So uh, um, the, the uh, people that we interviewed, generally speaking, agreed that these are the critical findings, but most people didn't recognize how significant that one serendipitous paper was. So that was an interesting thing that I found out. Um, people think highly of this thing. As I said, it was a landmark, and Georgia uh, was very much uh, at, the, at the heart of it all. So, I tried to do a 30-minute presentation in 15. I used too many words on my slides. I've made every mistake that we tell our graduate <laughs> students not to make. And, and uh, thank you for your attention.